Ladies and gentlemen, this is Charlie's band. Charlie, indicated in black here, has recently been kicked out of his band because he couldn't keep the beat anymore due to his progressing hearing loss. And Charlie is not alone. Currently, one in six people in the UK share his fate, and hearing loss is a permanent condition. With an aging population, this number is, of course, set to rise. In fact, there's a considerable risk for each one of us to acquire some form of hearing loss at some point in our lives, and then spend our remaining decades in musical abstinence. But no worries, I'm going to present some research today which is going to change that. Firstly, one could now ask, why doesn't Charlie simply get a hearing aid that amplifies all surrounding sound and continue his drumming? Well, it is true that hearing impaired perceive sounds more damped than the rest of us. But this is only part of the problem. Generally, hearing impaired people lack nerve cells in the inner ear, which usually um, transmit sound to the brain. Depending on which cells exactly are affected, and this of course can vary from person to person, they possibly miss out on important bits of acoustic information. In Charlie's case, for example, this means that he has difficulties in recognizing musical instruments or filtering them out from environmental sounds. Also, he cannot follow melody lines anymore, and most crucial, given that he's a drummer, he cannot discern rhythmic patterns. Again, Charlie is not alone in that. There's evidence that the vast majority of hearing impaired people share his issues. Nevertheless, current hearing aids usually focus on restoring the ability to perceive speech. Speech, per definition, is always generated by the human vocal tract, and thus is much more restricted than music, which can be generated by practically everything. So one reason why we could not help people like Charlie so far is that we simply don't know what music sounds like for you when you're hearing impaired. Therefore, we build a simulation of the impact of hearing loss on music perception, and this not only allows us to generalize on its effects, but also, for the first time, gives us an idea of what people like Charlie actually perceive when they are listening to music. Of course, this research might come too late for reuniting Charlie with his band, but for the rest of us, it might come in handy in 40 to 60 years' time when you're switching our hearing aid to music mode before going to the final ultimate goodbye concert of the Rolling Stones. <laughs> Thank you.